Alright, I was hoping the recent Nintendo Direct wouldn't give me more reason to hate Nintendo's business and marketing decisions, but... Well, just when I thought things were bad enough as is, Nintendo somehow made it worse. If you haven't seen my initial video essay of Nintendo's classic game conundrum, I'd highly recommend seeing that first to get you caught up to speed, as we're going to be picking up from there in a sense. But regardless, let's start with a brief recap of Nintendo's classic game stance on the Switch leading up to today. I feel like Nintendo's classic game stance on the Switch can be surmised with a story, an illusion of sorts. So imagine, there was this vast desert, and being a desert, everybody who comes here is going to want some water. So throughout the years, various different groups extract the water from underground reservoirs in their own unique way. Because each is unique, people eventually start to gravitate to whatever their preference is. As the decades go on, some reservoirs have to close, and new ones open up with new technology, features, and even ways to hang out here with others. But there were plenty of people who grew up with some of these old reservoirs, some of these old oasises, and really liked their style. Or people who've never tried it before but have heard great things about it and always wanted to try it. There's demand for these kinds of water. Nintendo eventually realizes this and opens the Virtual Console. You can enjoy these classics on modern hardware for, usually, pretty fair prices. The system was far from perfect, but it had something going for it and made some steps in a direction that made the majority of their consumers happy. But one day Nintendo opens their new reservoir, the Switch, yes! which quickly becomes a massive success. People flocked to this new desert oasis, but the question arose, how could we enjoy your old classics we've enjoyed so much? At first there was no way, but it seemed like it was coming soon. Eventually, Nintendo announces you can now enjoy water from a couple of our oldest reservoirs, wow. but you don't actually buy and own these titles. <laughs> That'd be silly. Instead, you need to pay us for the courtesy of being able to enjoy water with your friends. No, 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 that, that's not allowed. You need to pay the fine. Trust us, we totally need it to maintain this establishment. It's not like we're one of the largest game companies in the world. And hey, these other companies are doing something similar, so you basically just gotta accept that this is the norm now. But don't worry, the price is totally worth it. Why? Look, it's our two oldest reservoirs you love so much. Keep in mind, this is a service. You don't own these games. So if for whatever reason you think you can skimp out for a while on your fair share, say bye-bye to your games until you're willing to do your part again. Okay, Nintendo, but what about titles outside this selection? Ah, quite simple, really. All you need to do is get on your knees and cross the freaking desert to find somewhere there might still be some traces of our old library. Have fun! Man, I can't do that. That's not feasible. There's no way. Worry not, citizen. It is I, Nintendo Man, here to save the day. Look what offers we have. Want to learn how the Fire Emblem series started? Here's Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. Want another Zelda adventure? Here's Skyward Sword HD with our assurance of quality. When it comes to none of the textures being changed since the original Wii version, just, just take this in, these walls. Want to enjoy classic Pokemon? Well, here it is, the way you remember it. Wait, what? But looky here at this very special offer. It's Super Mario 3D All-Stars, the only way for you to enjoy these titles on the Switch. But just between you and me, we're doing this only as a special celebration. So after a certain date, we're actually going to refuse to sell this anymore. So if you don't pick it up in the next several months, you won't actually be able to buy it anymore unless it's secondhand. Look at this, it's Mario 64. If you don't buy now, this is water you won't be able to get again. Unless of course, that little hike across the desert we mentioned earlier sounds more appealing. We're really doing you a service here by making it available. So buddy, can I interest you in a full price glass to enjoy? So, 3D All-Stars releases, with quality of, uh, say collecting 100 coins like in Mario 16. Why doesn't B do anything? Why can't I back out? Y does nothing. X does nothing. Triggers. D-pad. Plus. I literally can't back out of this? What is this game design? I literally have to enter and exit area? The same thing happened in Mario 64. Well, the player has a B button. How fun would it be if it didn't do anything? Man, that'd be pretty cool. I'm pretty sure our players are gonna love that one. Man, I can't wait to bring this to the board meeting and see what they have to say about it. It remains out for a while, and the date finally comes that production and digital sales come to a close. Either you have it now, or you don't. Or you can buy it secondhand, or maybe there's still a little stock left. 
Six months pass. Still, the only way to play classic games is the two oldest consoles with Switch Online, and what Nintendo cherry picks to release at full price in the state of... whatever this is. Oh look, there's more lines. <laughs> a new Nintendo Direct. What news have we for these old reservoirs in this desert suffering from a classic game drought for years now? It is us, Nintendo, here to save the day once again. We're branching out to our third reservoir of titles, the Nintendo 64. You know, I'ma be real with you for a second here, consumer. We really appreciate your continued support lining our pockets to be able to barely play with your friends, and to enjoy our first two reservoirs. But we clearly don't appreciate it enough, you ungrateful freeloaders. We're actually gonna need more from you. We're adding an expansion pack to our online service, which is one of the strangest things to ever add for our subscription, but that's neither here nor there. And you'll only have access to this reservoir if you pay your fair share for games twice the age of half our player base. Better get ready to add this cost onto our barely functional online service as is. Oh, and onto Pokemon Home if you play Pokemon and don't want your Pokemon locked behind bars until you're willing to pay their bail. How much is it going to cost? We're not telling you yet, so that by the time we do tell you, you'll have already accepted that this was coming and we don't look as twisted as we actually are. But Nintendo, you gave me the impression that 3D All-Stars was going to be my only way to ever be able to play Super Mario 64. Waiting wasn't an option, because you were going to stop selling it because of your celebration. So if I waited, I'd never be able to play Mario 64 on my Switch. The option would be gone forever. We lied! And I mean, is it really that surprising? It's hardly the first time we've done it. Get pranked, nerd. Look, there's the cameras. Oh, but we're still keeping your money, though. Surely you'll still believe everything we tell you. That's how we got you this time and how we'll get you again. Oh, and, and before I go, don't forget your fair share, or else we're locking you out of your content again until you pay up. I know it's a pretty wacky example with a desert, and we kind of started drifting away from it halfway through that example, but that's the way I like to imagine it, because the whole situation in my eyes is a classic game drought that Nintendo themselves is causing and able to take advantage of. Like, imagine there's a well in this town that people drink from, but Nintendo poisons it and shows up the next day selling water. Nintendo is deliberately causing this drought so that they can be the saviors when they swoop in with their overpriced alternatives. And they can get away with it because so many of their titles are such an insane staple in their respective genres that they have close to a monopoly in each of these genres. It's like YouTube having a monopoly in the field of pre-recorded videos. Can you go to other sites for browsable video content? Yes, but who does? Or look at Pokemon, for example. Are there other alternatives? Yes, technically, like there's Temtem, but I don't think I've heard of anybody playing Temtem who didn't play it purely because they felt wronged by Pokemon. Sorry, Temtem. There's fan games, but Nintendo keeps a lid on those with more cease and desists than a Bethesda game's list of bugs. So how does Nintendo get away with this? Well, they're smart with their marketing and pacing. Imagine if the moment the Switch launched, day one, Here's a subscription service for online that barely works, that also gives you access to NES and SNES games. And here's an extra cost for the service for access to games so old, they're all from the era that everybody was figuring out what the hell even is a 3D video game. Oh, and here's another extra cost for being able to have more than 30 non-transferable Pokemon on modern systems. Stop paying for any of these things, and your progress and data is still there, but you're completely locked out until you pay again. People would lose their minds if this is how the Switch launched. We go from the Wii U with its incredible library of classic games you can pick and choose to buy and own, to this? The internet would lose their minds. Nintendo would have to make drastic changes. Nintendo knew this, and instead enacted a plan over the course of several years. The Switch launches with no classic games. Ah, that's alright. It's a brand new console, basic features like classic games, and an internet browser will surely come later. Half a year passes. Ah, I guess we just have no classic games here. That's really unfortunate. I really like those classic games. Nintendo Switch Online launches with NES Online. We have to pay for online now? That kind of sucks. But hey, it's not that expensive. And look, NES games. That's cool. Just when I was feeling bummed out about not being able to play classic games. A year passes. SNES games are added to online. Hey look, more classic games. Now from the SNES. That's really cool of you to add that at no additional cost. Thanks, Nintendo! Another half year passes. You can now have all your Pokemon on your Switch and the phone with a service that costs nearly as much as Nintendo's online service in the first place. 
Oh, hey, look, we can have all our Pokemon here now. Sweet. What's that? People are complaining about the price, but it's free, though. We can store 30 Pokemon for free. Ungrateful morons. A year and a half passes. Fast forwarding to today. More games are now coming to the Switch from the Nintendo 64 if you pay for an expansion pass. Oh, hey, more games I've wanted to play. Thanks, Nintendo. I guess I'll need to upgrade my membership once that's released, and that kind of sucks, I guess. And my prediction for the future when Nintendo reveals the price for this expansion pass, whatever it is. By then, people will be like, well, hey, it's more we have to pay now, but we knew this was coming for a while, so it's whatever. Do you see what's going on here? This is a deliberate loop. It begins with consumers feeling kinda unhappy with X thing, but time passes and eventually they just accept that that's the norm. So new X thing is introduced that makes people kinda unhappy, but time passes and people eventually accept that's the norm. So then Nintendo introduces the next thing that lines their pockets that makes people unhappy, and the cycle continues. Nintendo is smart. Very smart. And they're using careful marketing and timing to train their player base. Once you teach everyone to do it, the people who buy things in that area get conditioned to just be alright with it. It's like teaching a dog new tricks, really. For example, imagine you're sitting next to a nice cozy campfire you're enjoying. If somebody came and asked you if you could sit like 5 meters away from the fire, you're gonna say, No way, that's absurd! It's way too cold back there! So instead, Nintendo comes and asks, Hey, could you maybe scooch one meter away from the fire? And they ask really nicely, like, this way I'll have more games, more features, more fun. Ah, uh, sure, I guess it's not too much to ask. Some time passes. Hey, could you maybe move one more meter away from the fire? I guess I can. I suppose it doesn't make that much of a difference. Some time passes. Hey, would it be too much to ask if you could move a meter away from the fire? Okay, you haven't served me wrong yet. I trust you, and I guess I could make some effort to do that. Enough time passes, and eventually, you notice that somehow you've gotten freaking 10 meters away from the fire. Far further from the 5 meters you originally wouldn't have even considered going to. Nintendo's playing the long game here, and knows how to manipulate that to indoctrinate people into doing things they'd normally never do. These little micro-adjustments over the course of years from the hypothetical comfy campfire makes people forget just how much change has truly happened. Because rather than trying to make people accept sudden drastic change, they instead let people accept multiple small changes over a long time that are so far from where you started you wonder how you even got here, but that's the norm by now, the way things are, so we accept it. There's nothing from stopping this cycle from bleeding more and more from consumers, unless we voice our concerns and call for drastic change. But that's not quick change either. This video isn't going to change the corporate greed of one of the largest game companies in the world and owners of some of the most recognized and flagship IPs in the world, including the world's largest grossing media IP. This video can't change that. The opinions of every single person who watches this video cannot change that. But it's a step in the right direction to not just accept that every little change is just the way things have to be. They totally need money they're clearly lacking to run their servers after all, and look at all these features and fun they're bringing us. They've totally got our best interests in mind. Don't just accept everything somebody tells you, especially when that somebody has something directly to gain from you being of a certain mindset. And you can attribute that to way more important things in life than a company who makes video games. Don't even blindly accept this video. Do your own research and consider various other opinions you've heard, such as this one and countless others, to form your own opinion. Make your own truth and find your own path. Just don't accept that the truth that some company tells you when they're trying to sell you something is the truth that you should wholeheartedly accept. And don't forget to sometimes look at the big picture and how we got here in the first place. Thank you for watching the video.